Blessed weekend to everyone. It is wonderful to be able to come to the, to the throne of God, to worship Him, to sing praises to Him, and to listen to His Word. We thank Jesus who enabled us to get back to God with direct access. What a great privilege we have. Praise the Lord for our multimedia team and worship team to make it possible for us to come together to worship the Lord even though we are at various homes. Dear brothers and sisters, let us cast all our worries and anxieties at the feet of Jesus, put our mind to worship God in spirit and in truth. Now let us rise for the call to worship. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Today we choose to rejoice. Today we choose to worship and give thanks. Seek the peace of God that will guard your hearts and minds in Jesus Christ. Today we choose God's peace. Today we place our trust in God. Turn your hearts away from the distractions and disappointments of life that will always flow in and flow out like the tide. Set your affections on things above and worship the Lord who loves you and cares for you. We are to, we worship, are to worship God, God who alone is, is excellent and, and worthy of praise. praise. Amen. Amen. Now let us say the offering prayer in unison. Beloved God, we gather in the shelter of your love, grateful for the banquet of worship you have prepared for us. Focus our hearts and minds on the beauty of this time, the blessings of our lives, and the fullness of your message. Strengthen our call to fulfill our role as your partners in ministry to the world. Amen. Hallelujah! Our God is the God of God's King of Kings, God of Eternity. Let us all praise Him, glorify Him, and crown Him with many crowns.
Father, we come as your people to praise your name, to glorify your name. Grant us unity, so that we know how to love each other and also share this love to everyone around us. Father, we ask of you this day. Come and heal our land. Need our hearts together that your glory may be seen in us. And the world will know that Jesus Christ is Lord. Let us be one. Brothers and sisters, let us continue our worship in the spirit of prayer. Besides pandemic hit us so badly, we all know that there's so many things happening around us, especially in Malaysia. Lord Jesus, we plead to you that we come as your people and your nation, that you will reign in Malaysia, your spirit will fall, your fire will fall in Malaysia, and you will do something about it for Malaysia. Lord Jesus, hear our cry, hear our prayer. In Jesus' most precious name we pray. Amen. Standing in the presence of a great and mighty in adoration unto you with hearts humble broken full of gratitude to you lift our hands to praise and honor you lord we come your holy name we declare you reign in Malaysia let your kingdom come Lord your will be done let your spirit fall on Malaysia Pray to pray ascend, 
my gains are not to you. Lord, hear our cry and grant us a breakthrough. Lord, we come as your people, gathered here to praise your holy name. We declare your will in Malaysia, let your kingdom come, Lord, your will be. Time of intercessory prayer. Let us bring uh, some of our concern and petition to our Lord. First of all, let us pray for the COVID situation in Malaysia. As the number of COVID infections keep going up and the healthcare system is being stretched to the point of breaking, let us pray even more firmly, continually to our Lord. First of all, let us give thanks for all our frontliners, especially the doctors, the nurses, and uh, the medical officers for their tireless service and care. Pray for God's protection over them to keep them in good health and to keep them so that they can carry on their good work. Let us also pray for the health authorities to be filled with wisdom and courage to implement what is good and effective even if it is radical to bring down the infection curve. Let us thank God for the vaccination drive that is going on now. Pray for those who are still hesitating will eventually get vaccinated. We pray that Malaysia will soon attain herd immunity. Let us also pray for the general public to be resilient and cooperative in observing all the SOPs. Let's go to God in prayer.
let us continue to commit the COVID situation in Malaysia to our Lord. Right now, the situation is so unstable and uncertain with a lot of maneuvering and scheming among the leaders. Let's pray against the forces of darkness and evil of greed and corruptions. This Ephesians uh, chapter 6 verse 12 says, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the power of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realm. In Jesus' name, and pray for God's will be done in Malaysia. Let us pray also in faith, in asking God to prepare a new generation of leaders who will be God-fearing and who will be passionate to want to bring a positive change for a better Malaysia. Let us commit this to the Lord. Let us uh, commit Malaysia's political situation uh, into our Lord's hand. Pray for our kids and youth. First of all, pray all our young ones are being nurtured and trained to be rooted and to grow strong in Christ Jesus. We want to thank God for so many young families in our congregation. Let us pray for God's wisdom and guidance to be with our young couples, to equip them to train their young children in God's way. This is our prayer. Hear us, O Lord. Show us your way. We are certain that you will answer according to your will. Now let us pray the Lord's Prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now let us say the offertory prayer in unison. Gracious God, thank you for your abundant love and your nourishing grace. 
Thank you for the gifts we return to you now. Bless these gifts that they may become for other signs of your abundant love and vessels of your nourishing grace. Amen. Hi, I'm Nikki. Welcome to Alpha. Life is busy. Every day we ask so many questions. What should I wear? What's the weather going to be like? What's happening today? How am I going to fit everything in? But then there are those bigger questions. Like, why am I here? Where am I heading? Is this it? Is there more to life than this? These are life's big questions, but there's rarely enough time to think them through properly. We all have different perspectives on the meaning of life and faith, and Alpha is an opportunity to explore life's big questions. This is a great place to come together and talk about them openly and honestly. I'm Gemma. I'm Toby. And this is Alpha. Jesus said he's the way to God. He's the one who brings meaning and purpose to your life. He said he's the truth. He said he's the life, that true fulfillment is found in a relationship with God through him. Welcome to Alpha. Let us stand for the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise God, the Son and Holy
Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, it has been a long haul being locked down and still the virus is spreading. Although the government has allowed those vaccinated to gather together for in-person worship following SOP, the Board of Ministry and our local church leadership has advised against it at this time for various reasons. Right now, less than 40% of our population is vaccinated and the hospital beds are full. If we hold in-person worship and someone gets infected, there won't be adequate medical care for him or for her. Given our pandemic situation, we should exercise utmost care. Please stay at home and go out only if it is really necessary. For those who have to work at close quarters with others, and especially those who have to work as frontliners in the battle against COVID, we have been constantly praying for you to be protected. Let us do all we can to help one another during this prolonged lockdown by keeping in contact and look out for each other, especially those who are alone, those who need encouragement, and those who are depressed. Do what you can to cheer each other up. Above all, let us keep our faith alive and vibrant so that we are able to say, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. I would like to share with you how our church has responded and is responding to the ongoing pandemic and the growing needs around us. In March this year, the LCC voted to set aside 200,000 ringgit from last year's surplus budget to give to various needs as well as needs related to the pandemic. At the July LCC, uh, we voted again for another 200,000 ringgit as an off-budget item to be spent in response to the ongoing hardship of the people due to the prolonged pandemic. Now, we gave to uh, Living Faith Medi Church for their building project, uh, Winyard, to replace the equipment lost in the fire, hosting on school to put on the stage for the hall, uh, our own general conference, Methodist Church COVID Crisis Response, Refuge for the Refugees Hated by Haiti Kwa, uh, Crest to help provide a quarantine center in Travel Lodge Hotel in Kuala Lumpur for Category 1 and 2 COVID patients from the B40 community for free. Myanmar uh, Bible School, uh, knowing the situation, we thought we should extend our help to them. In view of the possibility that the pandemic may get worse in Para, our church is purchasing 10 oxygen concentrators for emergency use for our church members, the B40 and the diaspora migrant groups of people. We will be on standby to loan this machine to those who may need them. We are in the process of organizing how to best manage it. Last year and this year, the social concerns response to members who have lost their jobs and we help them financially. A number of our members have been going out on a monthly basis to certain B40 areas to give out over 100 food packages each time. We are also discussing how we can be involved in other ways with the B40 community, such as adopting and visiting them when the situation allows for greater engagement. The goal here is to help them to find a job by helping them to go for practical skill training or to give a small loan to help them with small businesses.
The details will be explained to the cell leader when we next meet. We would like to ask if you, as a CG, uh, as CG members, would like to be involved in such a ministry. Besides that, the Social Concerns Committee has received a special fund of 130,000 ringgit from donors. Now, this money has been set aside for helping mainly the B40 on the following categories. To give a small scholarship to help pay for tuition fees and for student living expenses. Purchase tablets and digital data for students to follow school lessons online. Some medication and assist uh, people who want to learn a practical skill in order to find employment and small loans for the poor to run small businesses. Meanwhile, our NGO, Lighthouse Hope, has been stepping out throughout this pandemic to distribute food packages to the B40, the diaspora, as well as the Orang Asli, besides giving out uh, packet meals on weekdays in Ipoh, Old Town. For the past few months, since May, every Sunday at our Nepali Outreach Center in Tasik, food packages have been given out. The number of food packages given out has increased to currently between 150 to 200 each Sunday. A group of our members attended the Diaspora Missions Training organized by El Shaddai two months ago. Some of us are gearing up to engage with the Diaspora community by teaching English. The idea is to reach out, give tuition online, and if they are interested to share the good news with them. Now at this point in time, we are still working on it. When things are more in place, we will keep you informed and invite you to come and help. Now on behalf of CGMC, I would like to thank all of our members who have put in their effort to lend their help during this difficult time. And I trust and I thank all of you who have been looking out for each other and especially those who really need your help. While we are in this lockdown, let us keep praying and looking out for each other. Let us also remember the poor and the foreigners who suffer the most during this pandemic.
Today's scripture reading is taken from the book of Philippians, chapter 4, verses 1 to 9. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, you whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, dear friends. I plead with Yodia, and I plead with Syntyche, to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you, my true companion, help these women, since they have contended at my side in the cause of the gospel along with Clement and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your heart and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable to you, our Lord and Redeemer. Amen. Let me begin with a parable. Death. D-E-A-T-H. Death was walking towards a man who stopped him and asked, What are you going to do? Death said, I am going to kill 10,000 people today. That's horrible, the man said. Death replied, that is what I do. As the day passed, the man went everywhere to warn everyone of Death's plan. At the end of the day, he met Death again. You said you were going to kill 10,000 people, but 100,000 people died. Death explained, I only killed 10,000 people. Worry, anxiety, and fear killed the others. This is to say that 90% of these people die of worries, anxieties, and fear. Sounds a bit far-fetched, isn't it? But the point of this parable is that excessive anxiety, constant worries, negative thinking can affect our bodies physically, emotionally, and mentally. It has been 514 days since 18 March 2020, the day we went into the first MCO because of COVID-19. 514 days and things are not getting any better. Take a look at the news. Our messages in our WhatsApp, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, etc. And you will see that the world is in chaos. The pandemic has disrupted our society and affected our economy. Our daily routines are disordered, our future uncertain. People have lost their loved ones, their job, their income, and many are struggling to put food on the table. Many are emotionally drained and are in despair. Sadly, some have been driven to suicides. Hence, we have had a difficult one and a half years. This pandemic has led to a rise in fear, anxiety, stress and depression among the many people. The pandemic has a significant impact on our mental health and today, many of us are worried and we do not have the peace in our hearts. In the midst of so much turmoil around us, how can we find peace? Someone once said, Peace of mind is that calm of mind that is not referred by adversity or disturbed by anxiety and fear. Brothers and sisters, we all want that kind of peace, don't we? Peace no matter what the circumstances are around us. The Apostle Paul says in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7, Do not be anxious about anything but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. 
and the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your mind in Christ Jesus. This evening, let us look closely at this passage and learn the keys to finding the peace of God which transcends all understandings. Let us first consider the, the Apostle Paul who wrote these words and the situation he was in when he wrote them. The letter to the Philippians was written around AD 62 when Paul was under house arrest as a prisoner in Rome. He was about to face a trial where he could be executed. He was facing house of accusation. The church he planted in Philippi was undergoing a time of conflicts, disagreement and false teaching. If there is one person who has every right to worry, it would be Paul. Yet, he was full of joy and thanksgiving. As he wrote to the Philippians Christian, he expressed his appreciation and love for them, and he encouraged them to live out their faith in unity, joy, and peace of God, with some short exhortation. For Paul's exhortation, let me draw some lessons to experiencing the peace of God. How can we attain this perfect peace in the midst of hardship and difficult situations? What must we do in order to experience the joy and the peace of God? as an ongoing reality in our lives as children of God. Firstly, to experience the peace of God, we need to stand firm in the Lord. In verse 1, Paul pleads with his beloved Philippians to stand firm in the Lord. Now the word stand firm means to be strong, to hold a position, to persist, to persevere, it is like a picture of a soldier standing firmly in battle. What are we called to stand firm in? We are called to stand firm in our faith in God. We are called to stand firm in the teaching of God. We are called to stand firm in the unity of Christ. We are called to stand firm in one spirit. Friends, no matter how great the distraction, how gloomy the situation, how strong the temptation, we are called to stand firm. So how do we stand firm? We stand firm in the Lord with the power of God. Secondly, to experience God's peace, we need to be of one mind in the Lord. In verse 2, we see that Paul was concerned about a dispute between two women in the church whose disagreement was apparently affecting the unity of the whole church. Paul pleaded with Euodia and Syneche to settle their dispute, their disagreement, to be of one mind in the Lord. Now, we have no idea what these two women was disputing about, but we know that they were prominent members of the church. They were fellow so uh, soldiers of the cross with Paul, for the advancement of the gospel. Paul considered them partners in the Lord, and now they are fighting against each other, and the disagreement are causing people to take sides, and these have caused division and created tension in the church. And so, Paul appealed to these women to make up, make peace with one another. In verse 3, he asked an unnamed person to help these women to settle their dispute so that there's unity and peace among the believers. In the same way, when there is conflict, there, there is disagreement, when there are argument, grumbling, criticism among fellow believers in the cell group or the church, this causes division and dissension, and there is no peace and joy. This does not reflect the Church of Christ. Yes, we are all fallen people and at times we disagree with one another. But let us learn to resolve our conflicts. Let us learn to forgive one another for our shortcomings. And as God's people, we must be generous in forgiving others, even when they wrong us, even when we disagree, because we have been forgiven much 
by our Lord Jesus Christ. So, as mature Christians, we do not allow disagreement to interfere with our love and unity in the body of Christ. When there is a need to settle the disagreement, we ask for assistance in the form of a mediator or a peacemaker. Thirdly, to experience the peace of God, we need to rejoice in the Lord. Notice there is a double emphasis here. Rejoice, and I say again, rejoice. Paul is actually telling the Philippians Christians to rejoice whatever the circumstances. How many of us will protest and say, how is it possible to rejoice when we are going through trials and difficulties? How can we rejoice always? How is it possible to remain joyful all the time? Paul tells us that the key to Christian's joy is its source, which is the Lord. It is not based on circumstances or our situation. It is not based on our feelings. It is based on the fact that the Lord is near. He is not far removed in heaven. The Holy Spirit is given to each one of us and He is in us. Four powerful words, the Lord is near, and because the Lord is near, we can rejoice. We have the assurance of His presence that will sustain us and empower us. And so, friends, remember, He is Emmanuel, God with us. This is the basis of a Christian joy. We rejoice in the Lord, and since he never leaves us or forsakes us, we can rejoice always. We do not have to be anxious because God is near and God is in us. Fourthly, to experience the peace of God, we need to bring everything to God in prayer. In verse 6, Paul says, Do not be anxious. Now, the Greek word, anxious here is formed from two words put together. The first word means to divide. The second word is the mind. So you have a word that means to divide or tear the mind. It is a perfect description of anxiety. Anxiety is when your mind is divided or pulled in different direction. The old English root word anxious means to choke, to squeeze, to strangle. And so a worried and anxious person gives you a picture of someone who's been strangled and pulled in different direction, literally having the life squeezed out of them. Now, let me ask you, my dear brothers and sisters, what good has worry ever done for you? Is it productive? We all know from experience that worry is a fruitless activity of the mind. Worry is like sitting on a rocking chair. It gives you something to do, but gets you nowhere. Worrying besides being unproductive is unhealthy. It is said that if we live under constant stress, anxiety, worry and fear, we will experience all sorts of illnesses. Worries and anxieties can have a physical effect on us. They can ruin our body and mind. In the medical world, it is called psychosomatic illnesses. Psycho is mind, soma is body, meaning something has gone wrong in our mind that resulted in something going wrong in our body. Let me say this, brothers and sisters in Christ. God never intended for us to live anxious and worried lives. He wants us to live without anxiety because God cares for us. This is why Paul tells us, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything. I love that word, everything. Paul tells us to take everything to God in prayer. In other words, 
Do not worry about anything. Pray about everything. That means there is nothing too small to bring to God in prayer. You know, often we tend to pray about the big things in our lives and forget to pray about the small things. We must realize that God is big enough to solve all our problems, big or small, according to His will and purposes. God is interested and concerned in every details of our lives because He loves us completely. And so therefore, bring everything big and small to God in prayer. Not only does Paul tell us to bring everything to God in prayer, he also gives us a specific instructions how to pray right. He uses three key words to describe prayer. Prayer, petition, and thanksgiving. First of all, prayer. The Greek word for prayer is in this instant is worship and devote, devotion to God. Paul tells us not to rush to God with our petition. This is not the way. Before we make our request be known to God, we worship Him, we adore Him, and we praise Him for who He is, recognizing His power, His authority. Remember the Lord's Prayer that we pray every week? It starts with our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This is the model prayer. After we worship and honor God, only after we have worshiped God, we ask for our daily bread. Secondly, so after we worship God, we bring our petition to Him. Petition is where we humble and earnestly pour out our concerns before God lay all our burdens on him and brothers and sisters you know god cares about what we are going through let me encourage you today with this verse it's 1 peter 5 7 it says cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you surrender to him all your concerns everything that worries you our god is concerned about all of your life down to the smallest details. He wants us to cast all our anxiety on Him. Remember the old hymn? What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear, all because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. And so Paul tells us that when we are going through trials, not to be anxious, but go to God, worship Him, bring our petition to Him, and then thank Him. Thirdly, we give thanks Now I know many of you will say, Alan, what am I supposed to give thanks for? when I'm so stressed out with anxieties and worries. It is so easy to thank God for times of blessing. When you get a promotion, you, a big bonus, you pass your exams, you receive the healing, you say, thank you, Lord. But what if you are retrenched, your bank account is running low, your mom suffered a fall and broke her hip during the MCO, your son is positive with COVID-19, can you give thanks? It's not easy. But God's word says, in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving. And so we are called to pray with thanksgiving in our hearts. Many years ago, Matthew Henry, a well-known Bible scholar, was once robbed of his wallet knowing that it was his duty to give thanks in everything. He meditated on this incident and recorded it in his diary the following. Let me give thanks first, because he never robbed me before. Second, because although he took my wallet, he did not take my life. Third, 
because although he took all I possessed, it was not much. And fourth, because it was I who was robbed, not I who robbed. And so my friends, with the pandemic raging on, we are told to stay home and stay safe. And so we can thank the Lord that we have a home to stay. We can thank the Lord for our family bonding time. We can thank the Lord for the chance to slow down and reorder our priorities. We can thank the Lord for the time to new, new things, new technology, and that we can stay in contact and also meet in CG meetings on different platforms. We can thank the Lord for our online church services each weekend, for the opportunity to be a blessing to others. We can thank God for our frontliners, for the vaccine, for the answers we are still on the way. We can thank God that He is with us and that He is in control. We can thank God for what He has done for us in the past. We can thank Him for His promise for the future and His provision. And as we thank God, we find our spiritual strength renewed and we are able to face the tough time ahead. And I believe God enjoys His children saying, Thank you, Lord. And as we go through this process of worshipping God, bringing before all our petitions, thanking Him despite the circumstances, something amazing happens. God gives us the peace of God, which transcends all understanding. This is God's promise to each one of us, a wonderful peace that transcends all understanding. Have you experienced it? It is a peace that grips us in the midst of the most depressing circumstances. We cannot explain it, but we can feel it deep in a sense of peace within our souls. And this precious peace does not depend on circumstances, situation or environment. This is a gift from God. And it is given to those who trust in God and place all their cares to God. This peace of God will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. That word guard here literally means garrison. Like a troop of soldiers stationed outside our heart, outside our mind, guarding our hearts and mind from wrong feelings, from wrong thinking. Which leads us to our next point. Think right. In verse 8, Paul says, Finally, brothers and sisters, Whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such thing. Paul is telling us that one of the keys to dealing with anxiety is learning to think, control, and manage our thoughts. Paul understands the influence of one's thoughts on one's life. What a person allows to occupy his mind will sooner or later determine his speech and his action. I am sure you have heard of the expression garbage in, garbage out. How do we take control of our thoughts? By meditating on good things. Rather than letting our anxious thoughts fix over, we center our minds on things that are pure, lovely, and worthy of praise. Now, one of the best ways to combat the enemy's weapon of worries, anxiety, and fears is through the power of the scripture. So, read and saturate our mind with God's word. Meditate and memorize scriptures. The more we read God's word, the more we will know God and trust his promises because we know that God is sovereign and he is control in in control. Isaiah 26 3 says, You will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. We need to pray right, think right, and finally, we need to live right in obedience to God. Paul says in verse 9, Whatever you have learned 
or received or heard from me or seen in me put into practice. In other words, live it out and the God of peace will be with you. Put into practice, follow Paul's example. Paul rejoiced in spite of hardship. Let us rejoice. Paul replaced worry and prayer. Do the same. Paul transformed his thinking. Ask the Holy Spirit to transform your whole being. We live right by putting into practice all that we have learned from the Word of God. We live right by living daily in obedience to God and His teachings and commandments. Brothers and sisters, if we desire to have the peace of God on a daily basis, no matter what we are going through life, we need to stand firm in the Lord. We need to be of one mind in the Lord. We need to rejoice in the Lord because the Lord is near. We need to pray right, think right, and live right. This, my friends, is the key to experiencing the peace of God. Brothers and sisters in Christ, is your heart troubled? Are you feeling like the events around you are spinning out of control? And it's beginning to take a toll on your mental and emotional peace. And if that is you, wherever you are, I would like to invite you to place your hand on your heart as I close with a prayer for you. Almighty God, we bless you for our lives. We give you your praise for your abundant mercy and grace we receive. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your faithfulness. Lord, many of my brothers and sisters are very and anxious today. Help them, Lord, this evening as they lay your burdens before you. Every single one of the concerns, worries, anxieties, and fear before your feet. As they cast all their cares upon, upon you and declare their trust in you, may you grant them your shalom that transcends all understanding right here, right now. Lord, please fill their hearts with your peace and joy. No matter what the problem they have, Lord, you are bigger, you are more powerful, and you love each one of them. Lord Jesus, may they know that you are near when life gets so difficult that their hearts just cannot feel you through the pain. Help them to remember your promise that you will never leave them or forsake them, and you are holding their hands as you walk them through the storms with them. No matter what the circumstances are today, give each one of them the living hope that they can only come from you. Please, Lord, let your peace rule in their hearts and make us a light for others to see your power and the strength. And we pray all this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Let us rise to receive the benediction. May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen.